everybody and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday morning, August the 24th and time once again for the mailbag. I hope you all have had a great week and a great weekend. Mine was good, but very busy, mostly during the week. Had to go out of town, so it was like busy in a way that took me away from the office and from creating content. So I've missed being here and being with you guys, but I'm ready to start doing some of that again. But mainly I was down in Austin, Basically all to do with the property that I bought down there about a year ago, starting to make building plans now. I think I'm going to be moving ahead with that. I've been thinking about it for ages and then, you know, it got kind of pushed back by COVID, of course, and now I'm ready to start kind of taking steps in that direction again. So potentially very exciting. Hmm. But uh, yeah, but it's going to take, a, I think, a lot of meetings and a lot of work from here on out. Anyway, for now, though, a uh, new mailbag, uh, starting a new week of content. And this one looks like a pretty hefty one. I've got uh, about 11 ebooks this week and nine physical packages. So we have a long one coming up. I'm just going to go ahead and dispense with announcements quickly because of that. So first announcement, of course, next week, September uh, September, uh, we'll start Space Opera. September. Yes, September. And uh, so that's going to be fun. I want to thank Matos, uh, Spanish language booktuber, for creating a Spanish announcement video for uh, SOS this year. That was so nice, such a wonderful thing to do. And I appreciate her efforts on that. Check that out. Uh, really great uh, and just very exciting. So, I, again, so much appreciated. Um, also, uh, next Sunday, remember the 30th of August will be the BookTube SFF Awards live show at long last, uh, public voting is now like happening, I think for the BookTube SFF Awards. I'll be sure and leave that link down below in the description. So, you know, for the public vote on the finalists, get that in. And then of course that will be my last hurrah for the BookTube SFF Awards and we will see where they go in the future. I hope it's very successful for them, but that's it. That's all the announcements I'm going to do. Uh, let me think. Yeah, that's all the announcements I'm going to do. So, on to the books, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to start this week with the physicals. And uh, this first one is a, a little Amazon envelope, which seems to be what the Silver Shamrock people... Yes, yeah, that seems to be how they are getting their physical books to me. So we'll see what we have. That's exactly what it is. It is a new horror novella from Silver Shamrock Publishing. And this one is called The Malin Witch... And the author is a Catherine Cavendish. So what I love about independent horror publishers is that this is where we are discovering the women who are writing horror. And there are quite a few more of them than you might expect. So, well, let's have a look and see what this one's all about, shall we? It says, Naught remained of their bodies to be buried, for the crows took back what was theirs. An idyllic coastal cottage near a sleepy village. What could be more perfect? For Robin Crow... Borrowing her sister's recently renovated holiday home for the summer seems just what she needs to deal with the grief of losing her beloved husband. But behind those pretty walls lie many secrets and legends of a malevolent sisterhood. Two witches burned for their evil centuries earlier. Once both their vile spirits were trapped there. Now one has been released, one who is determined to find her sister. Only Robin stands in her way. All right, then. And, and they have uh, all these little crease <laughs> effects I, are, are part of the art, um, I guess, to make it look like a very old used book. But uh, OK, The Malin Witch from uh, Silver Shamrock Publishing. Author is Catherine Cavendish. And uh, let me see uh, just about a release date on this. Uh, it doesn't say. So let's just assume that it is a September title. OK, so now I'm going to move on to what looked to be quite a few tour packages this week. So let's see what we have. And the first of these is the physical arc now for The Echo Wife, the new book by Sarah Gailey. And they're getting the arcs out for this one pretty early. This one comes out February the 16th. And, uh, well, I've, yeah, you know, I already got this as an e-arc, you might remember, but it's been about two or three weeks, so I'll just go ahead and reread all of this. It says, uh, meet renowned scientist Evelyn Caldwell. She's highly decorated for the strides she's made when it comes to genetic replicas and cloning, and has even accomplished creation of replicas. Unfortunately, not all is well at home. She's recently discovered that her husband Nathan has been having an affair. Mm. And to make matters worse, the affair is with Evelyn's own genetically cloned replica. Well, I mean, Evelyn, what do you... You're always at the office, right? What do you expect he's going to do? You give him a real doll of yourself. I can't blame the man. Oh, oh well. 
Anyway, after a morning that begins with a confrontation and ends with Nathan's body bleeding out on the kitchen floor, uh, the two Caldwell wives will have to think fast before sharing everything includes sharing a jail cell. <laughs> okay, I kind of like that little twist. That's fun. And so, all right, well, then this will be uh, February the 16th. I mean, is it really cheating if it's like with an exact replica of you? Right? I mean, kind of? I mean, why would you be? It's like, I mean, I could understand if it was like, you know, a sister or roommate or something, but you literally duplicated yourself. Well, we'll find out. Anyway, okay. The Echo Wife. I mean, I gotta say at first blush, I'm kind of on Nathan's side with this one, but anyway. Okay, another tour package. And this is the finished copy and trade paperback of Sorcery of a Queen by Brian Naslund. Uh, this is the sequel to Blood of an Exile. I believe this is a, a duology. Uh, epic fantasy duology. It says a fast-paced adventure perfect for comic readers and fans of heroic fantasy. All right. Uh, this one will be out on the 11th. Um, I guess that means it's already out. <laughs> okay, because the 11th was like a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Uh, but what else does it say then? It just says Brian Naslin's debut fantasy adventure novel, Blood of an Exile, was a page-turning saga about an unlikely hero. Bershad, a criminal sentenced to die by fighting monsters, only it turns out that he is unkillable. And so the continuation of the Dragons of Terra series, Sorcery of a Queen, follows Bershad and the exiled would-be Queen Ashlyn, who now seeks to unlock the secret of powers long th thought un impossible. Sorcery. Okay, well, uh, now you can uh, tackle both of these. And you know what I've thought of lately, since there seem to be a whole lot of duologies popping up, is that duology reviews, like, you know, both books in a single video, might be a workable idea. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And next up, also from Tor, we have The Shadow Commission by David Mack. Now, this is the third volume uh, in the Dark Arts series. And uh, I believe that it is both kind of magic and espionage um, also during... Uh, well, I think it started out during World War II, but we've now moved up into the 1960s, so we're in the Cold War now. And uh, so let's see. This one uh, also came out on the 11th. And it says, November 1963, Cade and Anya have lived in hiding for a decade, training new mages. Then the assassination of President Kennedy triggers a series of murders whose victims are all magicians. With Cade, Anya, and their allies, it's prime target. Their only hope of survival, learning how to fight back against the sinister cabal known as the Shadow Commission. Okay, so it's that kind of, like, action-packed race against time, sort of spy versus spy, but with magic and, and, and danger and... You know, hair's breadth escapes and all that kind of thing, I would think. So, yeah, this one started out with um, The Midnight Front, which was the one set during World War II, and then The Iron Codex, and we have now moved up in time for The Shadow Commission. All right, then, by David Mack from Tor Books. And next from Tor, we have The Last Uncharted Sky by Curtis Craddock. And this is the uh, final volume in the Risen Kingdoms trilogy. It's described as The Three Musketeers meets Jules Verne in the concluding novel. All right. An engrossing tale of courtly intrigue and breathtaking magic. Uh, this one also released on the 11th of this month. So, And uh, the first two books are An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors and A Labyrinth of Science and Sorcery. And we now have The Last Uncharted Sky. And the follow-up to those books, Isabelle and Jean-Claude undertake an airship expedition to recover a fabled treasure and claim a hitherto undiscovered uh, Kraton, C-R-A-T-O-N, don't know what that is, for L'Empire Celeste. When the ship is sabotaged by an uh, enemy agent and Jean-Claude is separated from the expedition, ancient secrets and a royal conspiracy threaten to undo the entire realm. Okay, yeah, this sounds uh, awfully swashbuckly and you know, so w with a bit of steampunk perhaps involved or gear punk or what have you. Yeah, and it does sound like that kind of Jules Verne high fantasy. So really nice. The Last Uncharted Sky by Curtis Craddock available now in hardcover from Tor. Now, next up, this one is from Bloomsbury, and this is one that I've already given you guys a sneak peek of as a community post, but uh, here it is for real. This is Piranesi, the new book, <laughs> long, long, after a long delay, uh, from uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell author Susanna Clark. Um, yeah, like nearly uh, over 15, 16 years. 16 years since that book. And then she just kind of vanished without trace. And uh, here she is again. So very exciting to see this. Although unlike Jonathan Strange, um, which was this massive thousand page tome, this is a pretty modest little book. 
as you can see, not, not that thick. Uh, so it comes out on September the 15th. You can guarantee that it is absolute top priority for me in the review queue, so no worries there. Uh, but what's it all about? Well, here's what it says. An intoxicating hypnotic new novel set in a dreamlike alternative reality. Piranesi's house is no ordinary building. Its rooms are infinite, its corridors endless, its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues, each one different from all the others. Within the labyrinth of halls, an ocean is imprisoned. Waves thunder up staircases. Rooms are flooded in an instant. But Piranesi is not afraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth itself. He lives to explore the house. There is one other person in the house, a man called The Other, who visits Piranesi twice a week and asks for help with research into a great and secret knowledge. Piranesi records his findings in a journal, but as messages appear on the pavements, evidence emerges of another person. Not all is what it seems. A terrible truth begins to unravel, revealing a world beyond the one Piranesi has always known. September 15th, you guys. Yeah, just uh, just wonderful, that one. Okay, this one is a random penguin package. And this one is in from Del Rey. It is a finished copy and hardcover of Ink and Sigil, the new book by Kevin Hearn, which is the return to his world of the Iron Druid Chronicles. And this one will be out tomorrow on the 25th. It says, Kevin Hearn returns to the world of his beloved Iron Druid Chronicles in a spinoff series about an eccentric master of rare magic solving an uncanny mystery in Scotland. Al McBarris is both blessed and cursed. He is blessed with an extraordinary white mustache, an appreciation for craft cocktails, and a most unique magical talent. He can cast spells with magically enhanced enchanted ink, and he uses his gifts to protect our world from rogue minions of various pantheons, especially the Fae. But he is also cursed. Anyone who hears his voice will begin to feel an inexplicable hatred for Al, so he can only communicate through the written word or speech apps. And his apprentices keep dying in peculiar freak accidents. As his personal life crumbles around him, he devotes his life to his work, all the while trying to crack the secret of his curse. But when his last apprentice, Gordy, turns up dead in his Glasgow flat, Al discovers evidence that Gordy was living a secret life of crime. Now Al is forced to play detective, while avoiding the actual detectives who are wondering why death always seems to follow Al. Investigating his apprentice's death will take him through Scotland's magical underworld, and he'll need the help of a mischievous hobgoblin if he's to survive. So you get the idea. It is, you know, urban fantasy with a lighthearted touch, as it were. And uh, so Ink and Sigil by Kevin Hearn. It will be out from Delray in hardcover tomorrow. Okay, this next one's a white uh, envelope, but it looks like it comes from Simon & Schuster. And to be honest, it looks like the males were a little bit brutal to this one. It's kind of banged up. Yeah, this one is a little bit beat up. Thank God I don't pay for these. Anyway, but it is the finished copy from uh, Saga Press of their new uh, anthology series, The Year's Best Science Fiction Volume 1 which I do believe I showed you an e-arc for, um, if not last week, week before, pretty recently. But this one will be out on September the 8th in trade paperback. And um, yeah, it says it's not only a crucial addition to the speculative fiction fans bookshelf, but a primer for readers of literary and commercial fiction who enjoy thought-provoking and highly topical fiction. Okay, and it's edited by Jonathan Stran, and it has 28 uh, stories in it. And as I mentioned when I talked about the e-arc of this, uh, you know, he pays tribute to Gardner Dozois, you know, who died a few years back and who did his own like long running, like 30 years plus, 35 years plus uh, annual best of the year series. And I think that, you know, uh, Jonathan Strand would like to continue that tradition um, along. So um, it says contributors include Charlie Jane Anders, Elizabeth Bear, Tobias Buckle, Ted Chang, Greg Egan, N.K. Jemison, um, Malk Older, you know, just everybody. <laughs> Everyone's in this, okay? Uh, Year's Best Science Fiction Volume 1 from Saga Press, and it will be out September the 8th. And last but not least, a final physical package, also that looks a little bit worse for wear, uh, and this one comes from Random Penguin.
All right, this is the finished copy and hardcover of Aurora Burning, the uh, current YA space opera series by uh, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, who wrote the Illumine novels. Now, I haven't read the first one of these, which was Aurora Rising. I have heard mixed reviews from uh, booktubers who have. Uh, but this is Aurora Burning, the second one, and um, there's no cell sheet in here. I looked all through it, so I don't know when exactly it is out or due to be out. Looks like this is a slightly bigger book than the first one. But if you're following this series, then yes, here is Aurora Burning. And does it say anything about the third volume? No, it does not seem to, so don't know anything about that one just yet. But here is volume two, Aurora Burning, in hardcover. So that is that for the physicals. Now let us move on to the e-arcs. All right, so among these, there are going to be a lot of titles from Orbit, especially, but uh, going to start out with this book from Echo Press, which comes out on December the 1st, and I'm really excited about this one. It's called The Blade Between. It's the new book by Sam J. Miller, uh, and it's a horror novel. And um, yeah, it goes like this. Ronan Sapezi promised himself he'd never return to Hudson. The sleepy upstate town was no place for a restless gay photographer, but his father is ill, and New York City's distractions have become too much for him. He hopes that a quick visit will help him recharge. Ronan reconnects with two friends from high school, Dom, his first love, and Dom's wife, Atala. The three former misfits mourn what their town has become, overrun by gentrifiers and corporate interests. With friends and neighbors getting evicted en masse and a mayoral election coming up, Ronan and Atala craft a plan to rattle the newcomers and expose their true motives. But in doing so, they unleash something far more mysterious and uncontainable. Hudson has a rich, proud history, and it turns out the real estate developers aren't the only forces threatening its well-being. The spirits undergirdling this once thriving industrial town are enraged. Ronan's hijinks have overlapped with a bubbling up of hate and violence among friends and neighbors, and everything is spiraling out of control. Ronan must summon the very best of himself to shed his own demons and save the city he once loathed. Hmm. All right. Well, that will be out uh, on December the 1st uh, from Echo Press. Now we get into some of the Orbit stuff, and it looks like September 22nd is going to be a pretty big day for Orbit. The first book I have listed for that day is Dead Man in a Ditch, uh, which is by Luke Arnold, and it is the sequel to The Last Smile in Sunder City, which looks to be a new urban fantasy series. And it goes like this, a former soldier turned P.I. solves crime in a world that's lost its magic in this brilliant sequel to actor Luke Arnold's debut, The Last Smile in Sunder City. The name's Fetch Phillips, what do you need? Cover a gnome with a crossbow while he does a dodgy deal? Sure. Find out who killed Lance Niles, the big shot businessman who just arrived in town? I'll give it a shot. Help an old lady elf track down her husband's murderer? That's right up my alley. What I don't do, because it's impossible, is search for a way to bring the goddamn magic back. Rumors got out about what happened with the professor, so now people keep asking me to fix the world. But there's no magic in this story, just dead friends, twisted miracles, and a secret machine made to deliver a single shot of murder. Welcome back to the streets of Sunder City, a darkly imagined world perfect for readers of Ben Aronovich and Jim Butcher. And it sounds very much like it is quite distinct from Jim Butcher and its approach. So A Dead Man in a Ditch will be out on September the 22nd. And also out that day uh, is a book that I'm very, very excited to have gotten. This is the new book by Adrian Tchaikovsky, The Doors of Eden. And uh, yeah, um, just uh, very, very, very happy to see a, a new... He's actually quite prolific, so it seems like, you know, I shouldn't talk about, oh, I'm always so happy to see a new book, by, because, you know, he does... It's not like it's a rare event to get a new book by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Uh, but this one in particular has gotten quite a bit of buzz, and, of course, following on, uh, you know, from Children of Time and Children of Ruin, it's, you know, this is not part of that same series, but it is the same kind of, you know, large canvas storytelling. And it goes like this. They thought we were safe, they were wrong. Four years ago, two girls went looking for monsters on Bodmin Moor. Only one came back. Lee thought she'd lost Mal, but now she's miraculously returned. But what happened that day on the moors? And where has she been all this time? Mal's reappearance hasn't gone unnoticed by MI5 officers either. And Lee isn't the only one with questions. 
Julian Sabrur is investigating an attack on top physicist K. Amal Khan. This leads Julian to clash with agents of an unknown power, and they may or may not be human. His only clue is grainy footage showing a woman who supposedly died on Bodmin Moor. Dr. Khan's research was theoretical. Then she found cracks between our world and parallel Earths. Now these cracks are widening, revealing extraordinary creatures. And as the doors crash open, anything could come through. Knowing Adrian Tchaikovsky, I suspect that, you know, the creatures might be kind of arachnid in nature. I mean, he's done some, he's, he's got a thing for spiders. He's a big spider fan. But then maybe not, right? But we will find out on September 22nd in The Doors of Eden. And finally, also on September 22nd, like I said, it's a big day for Orbit. Uh, we have the Ikasar Falcon. Another sequel, uh, this is by K.S. Veloso, and it is the sequel to uh, The Wolf of Oren Yarrow, which came out, uh, actually came out a while back, because K.S. Veloso uh, self-published that initially a few years back, and it was only just now released, you know, by uh, Orbit, you know, as a traditional published edition. Uh, this one goes, Abandoned by her people, Queen Talion's quest takes a turn for the worse, as she stumbles upon a plot deeper and more sinister than she could ever have imagined, one that will displace her king and see her son dead. The road home beckons, strewn with a tangled web of deceit and impossible horrors that unearth the nation's true troubles, creatures from the dark, mad dragons, and men with hearts hungry for power. To save her land, Talyin must confront the myth others have built around her, Warlord Yeshen's daughter, symbol of peace, warrior and queen, and everything she could never be. The price of failure is steep, her friends are few, and a nation carved by a murderer can only be destined for war. So there you have it, the Ikasar Falcon, on September the 22nd. Uh, now we're going to move down a bit. Uh, let's see, what do I have next? Well, this one comes from Daw Books. And this is a book called Give Way to Night. The author is Cass Morris. And this is uh, the sequel to a book that I admit I didn't, you know, I got it, but I just kind of set it aside. And, I, I, you know, and I think that maybe, you know, I haven't seen it talked about much. So uh, this may be a chance to catch up with these. But it's the sequel to a book called From Unseen Fire. And it is an ancient Roman inspired uh, fantasy series. It says this is the second book of the Aven cycle. And it explores a magical Rome inspired empire where senators, generals, and elemental mages vie for power. Latona of the Vitellier, mage of... I probably mangled that pronunciation, as I do. Mage of spirit and fire is eager to wield her newfound empowerment on behalf of the citizens of Avon, but societal forces conspire to keep her from exercising her gifts, even when the resurgent of a banished cult uh, plots the city's ruin. Okay, so there you have that. Give way to night the sequel to From Unseen Fire from Doll Books on November the 10th. Okay, so going back to Orbit for the next couple of books, uh, this is one that looks pretty interesting to me, certainly up my street, right? Space opera, hello. Uh, but this is a book called No Fet Gloss. Uh, the author is Essa Hansen, and this will be out November the 17th. It seems pretty interesting. It goes like this. When a young man's planet is destroyed... He sets out on a single-minded quest for revenge across the galaxy in No Fet Gloss, the first book in this epic space opera trilogy debut, perfect for fans of Revenger and Children of Time. Kaiden's planet is ruined, uh, his family gone, and his only hope for survival is a crew of misfit aliens and a mysterious ship that seems to have a soul and a universe of its own. Together they will show him that the universe is much bigger, much more advanced, and much more mysterious than Kaiden had ever imagined, but the universe hides dangers as well, and soon Kaiden has his own plans. He vows to do anything it takes to get revenge on the slavers who murdered his people and took away his home. To destroy their regime, he must infiltrate and dismantle them from the inside, or die trying. Okay, so, you know, not 100% the most original premise out there, but, uh, you know, it could be very exciting and action-packed in the execution, right? So, No Fact Gloss by Essa Hansen. Uh, will be available uh, on November the 17th from Orbit. Uh, and uh, again from Orbit. <laughs> now we're moving back to October. Um, this one is uh, another one now. Uh, very, very exciting for literary science fiction fans. And this is the new book by Kim Stanley Robinson. It's called The Ministry for the Future. And this will be out October the 6th. And it says, from legendary SF author Kim Stanley Robinson comes a vision of climate change unlike any ever imagined. 
Established in 2025, the purpose of the new organization was simple, to advocate for the world's future generations and to protect all living creatures, present and future. It soon became known as the Ministry for the Future, and this is its story. The Ministry for the Future is a masterpiece of the imagination using fictional eyewitness accounts to tell the history, or the story, excuse me, of how climate change will affect us all over the decades to come. Its setting is not a desolate post-apocalyptic world, but a future that is almost upon us, and in which we might just overcome the extraordinary challenges we face. It is a novel both immediate and impactful, desperate and hopeful in equal measure, and it is one of the most powerful and original books on climate change ever written. Okay, well, Kim Stanley Robinson has already addressed climate change in some of his earlier books. And so The Ministry for the Future sounds like kind of a hope punk tale for our very troubled times when it looks like the leaders of the world, or most of them, the, the most powerful leaders in the world, are doing anything but giving a shit about future generations, right? It's just all about, you know, uh, just nationalism and uh, you know, fascism and uh, consolidating power, and it's not about, you know, what's good for the world and what's good for the people. Uh, but this appears to be a book that is uh, meant to be a tonic for that, maybe to give us a little hope. So it will be out October the 6th. And out on October the 13th uh, is one that I'm sure some of you are looking quite forward to. This is the new book by Alex E. Harrow, the author of The 10,000 Doors of January. And this is called The Once and Future Witches. And it says, in the late 1800s, three sisters use witchcraft to change the course of history in a Hugo Award-winning author's powerful novel of magic amid the suffragette movement. In 1893, there's no such thing as witches. There used to be, in the wild dark days before the burnings began, but now witching is nothing but tidy charms and nursery rhymes. If the modern woman wants any measure of power, she must find it at the ballot box. But when the Eastwood sisters, James Juniper, Agnes Amaranth, and Beatrice Belladonna, join the suffragists of New Salem, they begin to pursue the forgotten words in ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. <laughs> Stalked by shadows and sickness, haunted by forces who will not suffer a witch to vote, and perhaps not even to live, the sisters will need to delve into the oldest magics, draw new alliances, and heal the bond between them if they want to survive. There's no such thing as witches, but there will be. All right. And uh, the Once and Future Witches will be with us on October the 13th. Okay, then. Uh, moving on, I think we have uh, three more to go here. Uh, Going to start with, this is one from Angry Robot. And again, one that I'm pretty interested in. It's a book called Refraction, and the author is Christopher Hins. Now, Christopher Hins is, in a way, kind of like Susanna Clark. He's this author who at the end of the 80s, sort of burst into the science fiction scene with probably the best, like, action-focused trilogy of its day, which was the Paratwa trilogy. Got all kinds of praise. I read them. I loved them. Uh, and then, you know, he, like, vent disappeared, right? Poof. Gone. For years and years and years. And then just maybe about four or five years ago, he resurfaced. Uh, he did a new Paratwa novel, and uh, now he has this one. Uh, I don't think this one is uh, from that uh, from that series, though. It says, if Aiden Manchester had to have a superpower, why couldn't it be something useful, like predicting the future or Jedi mind tricks? Instead, Aiden is afflicted with manifestations, mysterious balls of goo, which materialize midair while he sleeps. But then Aiden learns he was a quiver kid, one of seven orphan children drafted for an illicit experiment at Tau-9-1. Setting out to find the perpetrators and his fellow victims, Aiden's quest quickly turns lethal when he's kidnapped by a maniacal quiver kid with a dark agenda. As he uncovers the dangerous truth about his past, Aiden's very essence is called into question. Will a hellish confrontation at Tau-9-1 reveal the ultimate purpose of the quiver kids? Hmm. All right. So Refraction by Christopher Hens. It will be out November the 10th from Angry Robot. And for the last two books, we are going to go ahead and move into some early 2021 releases. This first one is from uh, Harper Voyager, I believe. Uh, it's by Greta Kelly, a debut author, and it's called The Frozen Crown. It says, A princess with a powerful and dangerous secret must find a way to save her country from ruthless invaders in this exciting debut fantasy, the first novel in a thrilling duology packed with heroism, treachery, magic, and war. 
Askia became heir to the frozen crown of Serevesh because of her devotion to her people. But her realm is facing a threat she cannot defeat by sheer will alone. The Mad Emperor of the Rovan Empire has unleashed a horde of invading soldiers to enslave her lands. For months, her warriors have waged a valiant stealth battle, yet they cannot stop the enemy's advancement. Running out of time, she sets sail for sun-drenched Vishir, the neighboring land to the south, to seek help from its ruler, Emperor Arman. A young woman raised in army camps, Askia is ill-equipped to navigate Vashir's labyrinthine political games. Her every move sinks her deeper into court intrigues, which bewilder and repel her, leaving her vulnerable not only to enemies gathering at Vashir's gates, but to those behind the palace walls. And, in this glittering court, where secrets are worth more than gold, Askia fears that one false step will expose her true nature. For Oskia is a witch gifted with magical abilities, knowledge that could destroy not only her life, but her people. As her adversaries draw closer, Oskia is forced to make an impossible choice, and no matter what she decides, it may not be enough to prevent Saravesh's fall. All right, so that is The Frozen Crown, first volume in a duology, available on January the 12th, uh, 2021, from Harper Voyager. And finally, also from Harper Voyager, we're moving well ahead with the final volume in a series that has been getting a lot of excellent press, and I really feel like I should stop making excuses and just get into it. But this is A Song with Teeth uh, by Teresa Frohawk. Uh, this will be out February the 9th, and uh, this is the fourth and final book in her Los Nephilim series. It says, As the Allied forces battle to defeat the Nazis... A shadow war rages between angels and demons fighting for the soul of humanity in this thrilling conclusion to the critically acclaimed Lost Nephilim historical fantasy series. The year is 1944, and the demons are rising. Uh, while the, uh, with the inner guard thrown into disarray by the German Blitzkrieg, the demon-born Nephilim of the Scorpion Court gather in Paris, scheming to restore their rule over the mortal realm. Working as a double agent, Diago Alvarez infiltrates his family's demonic court, but soon finds himself overwhelmed by his kin's multiple deceits. So as you see, there's warfare, and there's angels and demons, and there's skullduggery, and it uh, looks like all kinds of awesomeness. But A Song with Teeth will wrap up the series on February the 9th from Harper Voyager. Wow. And there you have it. Quite a few books for today, but uh, you guys know the drill. Light up those comments. Let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please hit the like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's Army sometimes get little perks, like getting to see whichever of my videos I finish early enough to post, <laughs> early access. But I do appreciate those folks' support very, very much. Helps me pay for my lovely thumbnails that are done for me by Matt Olson, my partner in crime here. So thanks very much for that. I want to thank all the rest of you for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube. And until I see all of you next time, please stay safe and healthy and happy reading.